Okay. I have no fucking clue how I missed this, but at the same time, I had no idea why this game, this area of the game was never emphasized throughout the entire playthrough. Because... Hold on. Because once you turn to your... Not there. Once I turn over... Where the fuck is it? Oh fuck crap, where is it? God damn it. it was... Oh, here it is, okay. Because once I turn over here, there's this area, which I never knew about. I never paid attention to this area whatsoever. I didn't even know there was like a... Uh... Originally, there was like a, a closed gate here, because like... This area was never emphasized whatsoever. So, honestly, I <laughs> had to chalk it up onto the game not being like... Very uh, informative about that. I mean, I guess like oops. if I go to the truth bowl, maybe it'll tell me. It says second floor dorms. Second floor of the dormitory area. So I was really confused because I assumed that the second floor of the dormitory area was this area, which is why I got really confused and really stuck. So. I guess I should have been paying more attention, but at the same time, like, the game really, really didn't emphasize this that much, because I think the only time we ever went to this room was on the second chapter, where, uh, it was, I think it's either one is I think it's either Celeste's murder or Mondo's murder, or, sorry, Celeste's execution or Mondo's execution, but aside from that, this area was never, <laughs> ever emphasized whatsoever, so I didn't really pay attention to it that much at all. The gate's open! Okay. Oops, also, I forgot to turn on my stopwatch. Okay. We can finally check out the second floor of the dorms, which means I had to do it. Holy fuck. Okay. This is the second floor of the dorms? It looks like some ancient ruins. Oh no, or no. It's more like a battlefield, like a bomb blew up here or something. Alright, oh well, this is interesting. There's some blood spews here, so we can assume someone's dead body was here or something, and I can't search it for some reason. Oh, that sucks, okay. Alright, there's two different areas. One leading to a bathroom. And once I look up around outside here, there seems to be nothing. No, like, started off area. Just like a black void, so... Is it assumed that we're still, like, underground or something? More blood. Holy shit, these are, like, pretty dry, too. They're also red, what the fuck? Why have all the blood been, like, pink previously? Okay, more blood. So, this is a dormitory of another class, or a student, I'm guessing. I opened the door just to crack and glance inside and immediately close it again. There wasn't even a hint of a bathroom, just a big pile of rubble. Alright. What the hell's going on in this room? The bed's completely torn apart. I mean, it's not even really a bed anymore, it's just garbage. <laughs> Yay, free money. Okay. And I doubt, like, this money is, like, I could use it anymore because this is the final chapter. So, it's not like it's very useful for, like, social links. Maybe I could, like, use it for, like, New Game Plus or something. Alright, there's nothing in here. It's not that I know of. All the other doors seem to be, like, completely, like, torn apart. They're unexaminable, so there's that, too. God, the graphics here all still look kind of shit. But then again, what do I expect from the Vita? Okay, boys' bathroom, girls' bathroom, more blood. This is the girls' bathroom. Even in a place like this, I can't bring myself to go in. What about the boys' bathroom? Is there anything in here? Uh, looks like a normal bathroom. Are they even functional? Nothing. Okay, so... This room here is just for decoration. Uh, ooh, there's like an outside area of some sort. What is that? Some sort of Illuminati eye? Oh no, that's like a, some sort of Egyptian... God card, I don't know. Egyptian symbol. Giraffe? What the fuck? Alright, what's going on here? This room is filled with lockers. It must have been for the Hope's Peak students who came before us. The class before ours must have used those lockers. Alright. A lot of things we can examine. Holy shit, okay. Still more soldered off areas. There's a metal plate mounted on this locker. I really want to know what's inside, but there's no way. And free money, why not? <laughs> I can't 
can't imagine any way to get this locker open. I'm not gonna even bother trying. One locker seems to be completely uh, closed though. What is this? I wonder if I can open this locker. Nope, locked. The card reader installed. There's a card reader installed on the door. That must be how you get the lockers open, after all. It's very similar to the card reader for the locker room on the second floor of the school. And yet, user you, blah blah blah. So, does that mean? Well, let's give it a try. So, I got my handbook, and then. No luck. Maybe only the locker's owner can open it, which means none of us can do it. Alright. I don't know, maybe we could find like a dead body or something with an e handbook of some sort. Same thing. Alright. So, all the open lockers. Unless one of them's somehow gonna unlock when I open them? I doubt that, but I guess it wouldn't hurt to try. Maybe. Holy fuck. This is gonna be the same description, looks like it's very broken, okay. Why not? <laughs> Got the same dialogue. Okay, no luck once again. What about this one? Look and last locker. Well, there's still more lockers that seem to be unbroken. Uh, but oh, it can it can hurt to be a little bit more thorough. All right, one more locker. Actually, no, two more lockers from what I'm seeing so far. All right. If nothing else happens, and I doubt that there's anything. Yeah, okay. Let's leave this area. It seems like there's really anything at all. God, this area. What about this? I can't stretch over there. I think this is the only an area where I could like walk over and open the doors to. This looks like a dead end and I can only go through this here. This looks like a normal living room. This room doesn't really feel like a student's room. It's more of an Adult atmosphere. Correct. Oh shit, hey, hello. This is the headmaster's private room. Kyoko! Indeed. I've been through the room several times already, but I still have one little regret. So I decided to check it out one more time. Huh? Regret? Uh, okay, well, before we talk to her, let's search around the room. There's a hidden door there. Oh, sneaky bastards. Huh? There's a strange gap in the wall. Is this some kind of design mistake or a construction defect or something? So... There's a gap here, but not just any normal gap. I can feel a, br feel a breeze coming. Indeed. There's likely an open space on the other side of this wall. Open space? Does that mean... You mean like a hidden room? I think I might know how to open it. Okay. You know how to open it? Did you figure out some kind of trick or something? Indeed. A very easy trick, yes. So easy. I'm not even sure you can call it a trick. I call it am recording. <laughs> just in case, like... I saved beforehand, so I could reload. Okay, everything's uh, everything's being played out, so that's good. Whew, I really gotta stop worrying about myself so much. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Hmm. I saw a program on that PC that I, that I think controls it. It's the right password, and the door should open right up. However, but I don't have a clue what the password might be. All we know is that it's probably made up of letters and or numbers. We can't really go from there. You're right. There's not nearly enough to go on. It's true. I looked through all of his paperwork, all the files on the PC, everything I could think of. I learned more about him than I had any desire to, but nothing that might have been his password. <sighs> when I think of how much time I wasted on this... Okay. So, there's a computer area there. It looks pretty fucking ancient, honestly. There's a PC on the desk. It must have belonged to the headmaster. Seem... Whoever used it this last, it looks like it was very interested in the ultimate despair. The PC still has some search results left on it. Then we might be able to get some info on the ultimate despair. However... There's not much though. Nothing we could already we don't already know. In other words, the ultimate despair isn't one individual, but instead points to some kind of group. That group is responsible for the tragedy which happened one year ago. They're the worst sort of people whose driving force comes from despair. However. And that's all there is to it. Not, not, not much to it, is there? <sighs> but I guess that's the best we could do to complete Kirigiri failure. As a Kirigiri failure. But any information about the mastermind is helpful, right? 
I appreciate whatever info we can get our hands on. I see. That's a good outlook to have. Alright, the ultimate despair had been added to the UK. Jeez. So there's a hidden room she can't get into. That's what she meant to regret. We can all assume that there must be some kind of clue waiting in there. But maybe for her, there's more to it than that. Anyway, if we want to get into there, we have to figure out the password. And if Kyoko can't figure it out, no way do I stand here a chance. No wait, there might be a chance. The password could be... Something Kyoko wouldn't have thought of, or something she didn't want to think of. For example... What is her name? What? Huh? Oh, sorry. I was just trying to think of what the password might be. I'm sure she hasn't tried it. I mean, it's totally understandable. After the way she talked about her dad, the idea that he would use her name as his password. Knowing how she is, I bet the idea never even occurred to her. Um, do you mind if I try it, just to be sure? Well? It's not like you need my permission. If you want to try it, try it. Do whatever you want. Okay. So, I hit the password, I'm guessing? Let's try it. You know, I'm glad I thought of trying Kyoko's name. But if that's not it, that might just hurt Kyoko even more. Hey. If you're worried about me, Makoto, don't be. I already know that your guess is wrong. Okay. In that case, here goes nothing. I collected myself and turned into the computer. If watch it be like a capital K instead. I guess. Let me just type the password here. I typed her full name, Kyoko Kirigiri. My hands were tense, I feel like that would be like the first option you would pick. If that's the fucking- Oh wow. Kyoko, you dumbass. <laughs> what? That did it? Kyoko, it worked! Why? Kyoko? Without looking at me, she disappeared into a hidden room. She looked grim. I probably should have talked to her beforehand, huh? Alright, um... Well, the door is now open. Let's get in. What lies beyond... Okay. Hey, Kyoko. I may as well not even have been in this room. Her case was fixed on only one thing. A present? Wrapped and covered in such joy. That's what made it so unusual. Huh. Should we open it, or is it a trap? Oh, what is this? Oh, I want to take a picture, but okay. I better check out the suspicious present before I... Oh, okay, fine. If the game says so. There's a brightly colored box here. It seems totally out of place in here. The more I look at it, the more suspicious I get. Should we open it? I'm getting kind of a bad vibe from it. But I mean, we can't not open it. Okay. Makoto. Be careful, Makoto. Why? You think it's dangerous? No, not dangerous. But surprising, probably. Huh? It would seem... If it is what I think it is, at the very least, it's not something you'll be happy to see. Wait, so you know what's in there? Anyway... Just don't scream or anything, okay? Are you saying there's something that'll make me want to scream? Okay, I'm gonna open it! You're screaming, Makoto. You're just doing it before you even, like, open the box. Alright, step by heavy step, I approach the box. I took a deep breath, <gasps> then took hold of the lid. Slowly, ever so slowly, I lifted it up. Light began to sneak its way into the box. I stole a hesitant glance inside <gasps> and... <laughs> God damn it, Makoto, I told you I have one job! Kyoko's ass is no use. I let out a trembling cry. That's actually not what I was expecting, but okay. What was in the box? It was bones. Human bones. It was the last thing I expected to find in such a bright, voice, joyful box. I mean, who could have possibly imagined? I see. Just as I thought. What? Explain yourself, Kiyogiri. Just as you thought? How could you have known that? 
I mean, there were bones in there! Human bones! Well, not that I was thinking of the bones specifically. I just had a feeling it would be his body. That's pretty much the same thing! A dead guy in the box! My father... Huh? What about him? Correct. What you found in the box? Those bones? That body? That's my father. Or at least, what's left of him. Are you serious? This is... Kyoko's dad? The same man she's been searching for? Hold on! How can you know that for sure? How do you know that's him? So... Given all the information we have already, that's the only possible answer. So, the same person may very well be the mastermind who planned all this out. And according to the files, the headmaster is a man in his late 30s. It seems possible, even likely, that he's somewhere in this school right now. <laughs> it's a very polarizing approach, I know, but okay, enough puns. Anyway, here's a hint. I'm sure I told you this already, but the killing game begins with 16 participants. And the only people to take in a single... Okay, uh, so it's just repeating. Alter Eagle said that the Headmaster was probably here in the school, but the only ones who were alive at the start of the killing game were us 16 students. When you put those two ideas together, it doesn't take much to assume in other words, that most likely my father was in this school, but he was also dead. That's my assumption anyway. As Kyoko explained her analysis, she was completely calm. Or, no, she wasn't calm. She was only trying to seem calm. She said it was just as she thought, so she knew it was a possibility. But I have to believe that, at some point, she wanted to be proven wrong. Which is why she never looked into the box herself, even though she had plenty of chances. I know Kyo Kyo Kyoko said she wanted to see her father, so she cut off all ties. But was that all there is to it? <laughs> More up here, sure, why not? I gave up some of that pride. In order to enter Hope's Peak, I had to reveal myself to the school. I did it knowing it was something the true Kirigiri detective would never do. She would really give up her pride just for that? I couldn't help but wonder. Okay. Well, there's that. Now, can I'm guessing we can search up everything else. The filing cabinet seems to be a kind of old place you'd find a clue. I should take a closer look. But I don't think Yoko would like a stranger touching her dad's stuff. Hey. It's fine, check whatever you want. Are you sure? Okay then. At least I got her permission. I went through each drawer one by one starting from the top. All I found were piles and piles of unrelated documents. He was pretty dedicated to his job, huh? Well? It's just because he didn't have anything else. He could have inherited our family business, our legacy. I said he left it all behind. Now, if... If he couldn't even handle a job like this, he would have been much more of a failure. I'm sure he couldn't stand the thought of that and it made him desperate. Can I search up... Yeah, I can... okay, so I can search up this picture. Huh? This picture? That's Kirigiri when she's young, I'm guessing, and I'm assuming that's the dad. It's all faded. It must be pretty old. Wait, is this a picture of... Hey, Kyoko. Why would you... Well, this is annoying. I came here to cut myself free from the past, and yet... To find out something like this? So what do you expect me to do now? Then I was right. It's a picture of Kyoko when she was a little girl. Knowing the headmaster had this picture all this time, he must have really cared about her. Why? Why? What? I wanted to face him and tell him myself to cut him out of my life for abandoning me. That's the whole reason I came here. And now he's abandoning me again. And this time he even stole the only opportunity I had to move on. Has there ever been a worse father? Kyoko. Okay, 
I see. Alright. The headmaster's desk. It's probably hiding some kind of clue, so... I don't really want to check it out, but... I really don't want to touch Kyoko's desk. Okay, she's gonna say it's okay. Hey. Don't worry about me. Feel free to look around as much as you like. Are you because... sure? Never let anything get in the way of investigation. I don't. Okay, then, if you don't mind. It's not for the blah, 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 blah. I should find nothing but unrelated documents. But the last drawer? Huh? Is this? It's an e-handbook, right? And it has a label on it. It says, in case of emergency. Really? I found some kind of emergency handbook on the headmaster's desk. In other words... A handbook with no limitations given to the school's ultimate authority, the headmaster. I'm assuming that's what that is. I think you're probably it right. Seem... It might prove useful as we continue our investigation. Why don't you hold on to it? I. Alright. Hey. Listen, Makoto. Huh? Can I ask you a favor? Alright. A favor? What is it? So... I know it's completely unreasonable to ask you this. And I know it's only inconceivable... You, uh, inconvenience you that much more, but... Hey. Could you leave? Huh? Correct. Just for a little while. I'd just like to be alone for a bit. Don't worry, I'm fine. I just need to calm down a little. Just a second. I need to... Get my emotions in order. You know, Kyoko, you told me before about the relationship you have with your dad. How you're only connected by blood, but not by heart and soul. But maybe that picture motivated him. Maybe he hoped to see me again. Uh, maybe that picture motivated him. Maybe he hoped to see me again someday. Is that what you're going to say? If so, it's just a theory. And this isn't an issue that can be settled with theories. That picture doesn't change the facts on what's happened, what I went through. I... The prob that problem can't be solved so easily. You're right, I'm sorry. Anyway... Once I got myself under control, I'll return to the investigation immediately. So please, just give me some time to hurt myself. Alright. Alright, so I guess that's that for that room. Maybe I should return to the locker rooms? Or maybe I could use this thing for, uh... Dead body room again. There's no doubt the mastermind performed that evil deed. They killed the headmaster, killed Kyoko's father. They killed him. The headmaster is dead. The one leading the Hope's Peak staff, the one who finalized the plan to isolate you, was the Hope's Peak headmaster. Uh, okay. Man in his late thirties. Possible, even likely, that he's someone who's right now. Okay. But we were wrong about that. The headmaster wasn't the mastermind, which means the mastermind's true identity is whoever's controlling Monokuma, of course. Okay. Fifteen of us met in the main hall. Add Mercur Mercuro to the mix and you get 16. Including me, only 6 of us are still alive. Everyone else is dead. So that doesn't explain why there's still 7 things that are still active or inactive. I mean, yeah, just remind us of all the deaths that occurred, why not? Even Mercuro. Even she's undeniably dead. How do we know that for sure? There's only se Okay. We got to look at the fucking dead body, please! So the ones still alive are... Me. Byakuya. Hiro. Toko. Hina. And Kyoko. Only those six people are still alive. Thanks for just... Okay, there, there's no question. Wait, no, that can't be! I refuse to believe there has to be some other way. There has to be- Look at the fucking dead body again! God damn it, okay. Now that we have the emergency thing, we could easily fix that, although with the new emergency thing. I wonder what happens if we, like, search around this area this time and open the locker and see if there's anything interesting. 
Uh, I don't know, but it can hurt to check, right? All right. What's in this locker? No, not the broken ones. Thanks for prolonging this, goddammit. Okay, let's go one more try. Alright, let's try this. Alright, just what I was hoping for. Now, let's see what's inside. Locker is totally disorganized. Whoever belongs this belongs to probably has organization problems in every part of their life. Okay, so let's see here. Textbook. <laughs> I'm pretty sure every single one of these lockers have like some sort of monotonous details. Dust everywhere it has to be assumed that. Whatever stuff this is, didn't do a lot of studying. Not that I can really talk. Okay. Alright, what is this? Yasahiro Hagakur. The fuck? What? There's no denying what I saw. Inside the notebook, it was written Yasahiro Hagakure. Is that our Yasahiro? But he has a different last name, so this is probably Celeste, right? The notebook also contained a large number of notes for a variety of different classes, which could mean he attended classes here? No, that can't be possible. I mean, Hiro came to this school at the same time as the rest of us, and we were all sucked into the evil world. We never had a chance to take any classes. So what is this notebook? Interesting. Hagakure. Is that his last name? Hold on, let me check real quick, like, just in case. I guess one, like, Celeste has, like, a certain last name as well, but... Hold on. Oh, no, that is his name. Okay. Interesting. Alright. <laughs> that would also explain all his voodoo shit as well. This is a crystal ball. Huh. A crystal ball. No, it can't be. There's no way he would ever use this locker. It's just not possible. And what about... Yeah, what about... I guess the tarot cards? Or whatever those things are? Is that a deck of playing cards? No, they're tarot cards. But wait! Aren't those used for fortunes? This is just a coincidence, right? Interesting. Alright, well... That locker... Is Yasuhiro's. No doubt about that. Or somehow relate to Yasuhiro. I'm guessing all the broken lockers relate to the dead bodies? Or uh, the dead victims? From the class- okay. Let's try this now. You don't see anything, okay. So I assume that every single locker would relate to everyone here. That what it seems like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once again, seven not broken lockers. Wait, is this broken? I can't tell. That might be broken, never mind. Okay, so six! Okay, maybe that doesn't relate to the- I don't know. Maybe it's just a coincidence. I don't get it, but... This one's also empty, though it could also be explained that no one uses that locker, or one, one of us don't use lockers or something. Alright. Alright, what's in... Huh. What is this thing? It's just one some kind of pocketbook. I don't see a name written on it, so I can't say for sure who it is. But there's some writing inside. It could be important. I don't like violating the owner's privacy, but I better take a look. It looks like a girl's handwriting. Or it could be someone with a very good handwriting. It can't just be a girl, you know, you sexist prick. Uh, and all the letters are spaced out evenly, like whoever wrote them was measuring them. Whoever wrote this must have been really meticulous. Huh? I was flipping through the pocketbook, but my hand froze when I got to a certain page. I saw something similar, familiar right there, words I'd heard before. There's a plan to turn Hope's Peak into a shelter and isolate the students here in a communal life. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. It just so happens to be the headmaster and my father. He was willing to give me some more details regarding the plan. Here's what he said. The point is to keep our students' prodigy safe to keep them as our hope for the future. Only their genius can overcome disaster, and only their hope can overcome despair. Huh. 
So, whoever uh, this new headmaster is, or the mastermind behind this person, this air, this uh, killing game, he wants more. Dis so yeah, so the father wants more hope in this world, but he's dead. So I'm guessing this is Kiri Giri's notebook then, huh? For the future of our country, our world, it's not an exaggeration to call this our final hope. We must isolate our superior youth from the corrupt world to serve as the foundation for a new era. This is the only hope we have. I hope that you'll be willing to go along with this plan. So that's what my father had to say to me. As usual, he made a selfish decision without consulting anyone else. I can't imagine a worse father. I can't... This can't be true, can it? But I knew it was. And I knew exactly who the pocketbook belonged to. Kyoko. It couldn't be anyone else. But if this belonged to Kyoko, what was it doing in this locker? And what she wrote here completely contradicts what she already told me. She said she hasn't seen her dad since he left when she was little. I'm gonna tell it, we're in some sort of weird fucking matrix. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. It just so happens that the man master and my father... It just so happens that the headmaster and my father... What does this all mean? I quickly scanned through the remaining pages of the notebook. I must have been looking for something that would prove me wrong about this whole thing. But when I reached the last page, the question mark spinning around my head. I just started spinning the much faster! Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, this is getting really meta here. When I looked at it... Oh, shit. It's almost 30 minutes, so I'll take a really quick break, and we'll be right back. It's probably already past 30 minutes because I forgot to time myself, but I'll be right back. Stay tuned for next episode of Danganronpa.